everyone and welcome to Garden to Kitchen. Today we're going to be talking about fluorescent lighting. So if you're thinking about growing plants this winter indoors, perhaps for the first time or not, uh, you may want to stay tuned because I have some excellent tips for you that you'd be pleasantly surprised that you can do at home and grow plants in your basement using fluorescent lighting. So let's get started. First thing I want to do is talk about color temperature. The color temperature is crucial to growing plants, at least growing nice green, short, stocky, healthy plants. Outdoors, of course, we have the sun. We have the orientation of the sun coming up in the morning, which is red in color. And of course, by 12 noon in the afternoon, it's turned into a bluish color. And later on in the day, it turns back to red. And that's quite evident by the photographs that you take with sunrises and sunsets that are glowing red. And your plants enjoy that particular wavelength as well. So if you're thinking of growing plants indoors, uh, you may have been doing this for a while. You may have uh, been growing plants using light fixtures or fluorescent fixtures, the older types uh, like I did about 20 years ago. Yeah, it's been 20 years that I've been growing uh, plants, so it's flowers and vegetables. And at many times I've been using the older variety of uh, fluorescent tubes and they are the one and a quarter inch T12s. When I first started using the T12s, and that might be important to you because you may have some old fixtures in your basement or you may have been using them for a while. When I first started off, I bought some of the older fixtures that were coming out of a building that were being refurbished. At the time, they were $2 each and I got free tubes. Can you imagine that? So I took them home and I wired them up and I got them going in my basement. Now, this is what I did, and this is the true story. I used an extension cord similar to this one here, and it's a two-wire extension cord uh, with a plug-in on the other end. And, of course, I wired, took them apart, looked at the ballast, and I wired them up, and I plugged them in. And, boy, they came on, and they worked just great. And I hooked them up with some wire um, uh, chains, uh, and I uh, to the ceiling and uh, plugged them in. <laughs> but one day I went down and I, the ceiling was only about six feet tall. It was an older house that was around 125 years old. And I was bumping my head against the, uh, the duct, the ductwork, which was galvanized metal. And I touched the uh, metal here on the fluorescent fixture and I touched the uh, the galvanized uh, heating pipe at the same time and of course I got a shock and I didn't realize oh wow I should be using a three wire instead of a two wire so that there was a ground so uh, I got shocked a few times and then I eventually switched over to a three wire and that stopped the all the shocks that I was getting at that time and I guess that contributed some of the the gray hair that I have here today I suppose now Here's a tip uh, that you're going to really like. Uh, at the time, about 20 years, the, 20 years ago, Department of Agriculture in Canada, uh, they did this study on fluorescent tubes for gardeners, and they wanted to determine which type of fixtures, or what I should say, what type of lights would be beneficial to growing plants at home for your garden. Anyway, as a result of the uh, the study that was done, they determined that if you use the combination of daylight bulbs along with some tungsten or warmer colored bulbs, uh, the plants would receive uh, blue light and red light at the same time if you had a fixture with two or four lights in it. And that's what I've been doing for a long time. If you want to check this one out, uh, come on over here right now and I'll show you. I'll tilt this up and uh, you'll be able to see the bulbs. Uh, as you can see, the yellow one, uh, that uh, happens to be a 3000 uh, Kelvin, 3000 Kelvin. And I'll mention that in a minute because that's important. 
and 3000 Kelvin is a warmer bulb and the plants will get the red spectrum from that one. I also have a bluer one here and this bluer one is 6500 Kelvin and that's pretty well as blue as you can get with a fluorescent bulb. And of course opposite uh, on both sides of the light fixture I have two bulbs that are 5500 Kelvin. So with this combination the plants will receive some blue light and some red light. And I've been doing this for a long time so I know it works. I used to have a 4,000 square foot garden with flowers around the front. It was beautiful and I grew all my own flowers and I grew all the uh, vegetables that were in the garden as well and they were short, stocky and green and they were really well, really grew well. So that's my tip, my big tip. Combined, if you have a fixture with more than two, two or four lights, you can combine the color temperature uh, of the bulbs together and that will help uh, to uh, grow your plants uh, short and green and stocky and that's what you want them to be. Uh, in addition to that of course we have some uh, some T8s. T8s are the smaller bulbs and the ones that I've just shown you actually are T8s and they're a one inch diameter and uh, you can also get them in a uh, 6,500, 5,500, uh, actually 4,000 or 3,000 Kelvin uh, different color temperatures and you can use uh, these particular bulbs in your fixture providing they will fit. That. These two bulbs that I mentioned are mercury filled bulbs. Now a lot of people don't like having the bulbs with mercury in them. They're very difficult uh, to uh, to get rid of once they expire and they don't work anymore so you have to bring them to specific areas to have them disposed of that's mercury vapor a lot of uh, new gardeners are switching over to LEDs and I have an LED light here uh, as you can see it has a plastic end on it it's the same shape or same diameter as the a regular uh, fluorescent uh, mercury filled and uh, this uh, bulb will last you about I think it's 40 40,000 hours so it will go on forever basically and it's a cool bulb it's, there's no heat coming from it so you can bring it right down to your plants and you actually touch your plants and it won't hurt your plants so if you get a chance you can move up to the LEDs which cost a little bit more uh, I'd say about uh, I think they're around around twelve dollars versus the other ones which are about six dollars five six dollars Canadian so that's an idea for you as well switching over to LEDs. I also have another example here of LEDs in a self-contained unit. So if you don't have a fixture already and you want to make a switch over to LEDs and you're getting into growing your plants for the very first time, you may want to consider something like this unit here, which is a self-contained unit. The bulbs are self-contained in the fixture and this will last you for 40,000. Uh, hours as well. So great, um, great fixtures. I also should mention that when you're shopping for uh, fluorescent lights, whether they be mercury vapor or LEDs, most of them are ranged from 1600 lumens to 2000 lumens. So that's an indication about how bright they are. This particular uh, self-contained LED is quite bright. It's around 4,000. Now I hope that gives you some ideas, whether you're just starting off and you're wanting to grow plants or you've been doing it for a little while. So maybe you're gonna try the combination of warm white and cool white in your uh, fixture to grow your plants really big and strong. Or if you're just starting off, uh, you may want to get some LEDs at your choice. But like, give it a try. You can do it. You can grow your plants in your basement and get a head start on the gardening season. So thanks for watching. Hope you watch again. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.